Hello, my crafty friends, and welcome to the 12-week Get Organized Challenge sponsored by Creative Scrapbooker Magazine. If you feel overwhelmed when you sit down to craft, you are in the right place. We are gonna help you get your craft supplies under control, and we're gonna do it together. We're gonna do it as a group, and we are all gonna support each other in the process. So, basic um, info on the challenge. You'll be able to come here to this webpage every week, get the video, read the blog post, get the downloads that you need to complete your challenge. If you have questions throughout the week, you can um, join or visit or lurk around the Get Organized Challenge Facebook group. It's the 2011 Get Organized Challenge uh, Facebook group. We'll put up a link to it. The gals in that group have been part of my Get Organized Challenge for years, so they can mostly answer all of your questions anytime, any day. Feel free to join the group and become part of the Get Organized Challenge crowd. It's a great group of gals, really supportive. You are absolutely going to love it. That is the first thing you need to know. The next thing that you need to know is Everything that is that I'm going to talk about is going to have that download, that video, that printable, and it's all going to be linked in the blog post. So don't feel like you can't come back and watch again, or there's not additional materials available for you, and we'll provide you with all of those links. So we'll keep it super easy, and you'll be able to stay on track with your goals. Another really important thing to know, your craft room probably didn't get disorganized. Um, over 12 weeks so it may take you longer than 12 weeks to actually really get it all done and get it fine-tuned don't get overwhelmed set realistic goals for yourself you can always come back and rework a certain part of the challenge paper is a huge category for people as an example you might not get all of your paper organized next week when we do paper organization challenge you can always come back and do it again okay so let's get started Welcome to week number one, plan to be organized, set yourself up for success. This week, we're not gonna do any organizing other than organizing ourselves to be ready to move forward with each of the different challenges as we go on for the rest of the week. So this week, what I want you to focus on is getting a system, making sure you have the tools, have the understanding, the foundation of what we're gonna be learning and working on for the rest of the month. So the first thing you need to do is you need to start a notebook. It can be a virtual notebook or a physical notebook. That's gonna give you a place to store those downloads or if you're someone who likes to print things out, to um, print them out and put them in that notebook. It's gonna help you to refer back to things and keep you focused as you go. So that's the first thing that you're gonna need to do this week. The next thing you need to do, and really the most important thing you're gonna do, is decide why you're here. What is the reason, and that's gonna sound silly, right? Because in your head you're going, that's dumb. I'm here because I wanna get my craft room organized. But there's a bigger reason than just being organized. Maybe the reason is, that your craft room is overwhelming and it's not fun to craft anymore and it's because when you go in there and when i say craft room that could be a room it could be a bunch of totes it could be a rolling tote it could be a closet it could be a corner of your living room your craft room or craft space when you go into that space it's no longer fun to go in there because it's so overwhelming maybe you spend so much money on craft supplies but you're overwhelmed and so disorganized that you don't use them so you actually feel guilty about the money that you're spending Spending. Maybe you'd love to invite friends and family into your space to craft with you, but you just can't do it right now because it's such a mess you don't have the space. What is your why? Why do you want to get your craft room organized? And that is the thing that's going to keep you motivated and inspired to keep going as we go through these 12 weeks. Because trust me, there are going to be times when you think, oh my gosh, I'm never going to get this done. And you get overwhelmed and your brain starts to shut down. We're going to talk about all of that as we go through the challenge because so much of what happens, happens in your head and we're going to talk about how to fight that off as well so that's the first thing or the second thing I guess you've got your notebook and then your why why do you want to get organized next up is a good system and I want you to um, take note of that I use the word good instead of perfect good is the enemy or perfect is the enemy of good you need a good system there is no perfect system there is no one-size-fits-all system my goal over the next 12 weeks is to give you the foundation and the building blocks and the ideas and the strategies and then everybody's going to tweak theirs a little bit which brings me back to the or to the get organized challenge group on facebook there isn't really a q a uh, portion 
of this challenge, but you are gonna have questions or you might just wanna hear the other questions that people are asking, please feel free to pop on over to the Get Organized Challenge page. If you search 2011 Get Organized Challenge on Facebook, it'll pop up, but there's a row of cartoon girls all standing together. You can either join the group or lurk in the group and read people's questions. But if you have questions, the gals in that group have done my Get Organized Challenge some of them more than once. So there, so that way there's, there's 26,000 people who've already participated in a challenge. So if you have a question in the middle of the night, wherever you are in the world, somebody's probably online who can help you, give you a link, give you advice or motivation or inspiration. So it's gonna be a great place to go and answer those questions. So you definitely wanna be a part of that or at least linked into it and know it exists. And everything that I talk about linking, there'll be a link at the end of the blog. So you'll be able to find all those things. Don't worry about writing things down or trying to remember what I say. Okay, good system. The four section system is what we're going to work with. Four, we're going to organize the majority of your craft supplies into four major categories. Alphabets, numbers, and punctuation marks, number one. Themes and sentiments, number two. Calendar year is number three, and the rainbow is number four. So if you let your mind take a walk through all of the things in your craft supply collection, is there anything that won't fit into one of those four categories? And I'm not talking about tools like, um, you know, like, you know, eyelet setters and that type of thing. We're just talking about craft supplies now. So learning and understanding that four section system, that is a major foundation for getting organized. So there's a video and there's also a blog post attached. So if you have questions about that, what's in each category, why they're in each category, please take a few minutes, watch the video or read the blog post and then I'll answer a ton of questions. That's gonna be one of your assignments this week to either read that post or watch the video. Okay, um, next up, what else do we need to worry about here? We need to worry about purging. You need to set a purge goal this week. Ugh. Some of you watched the um, video I did with my sister where we reorganized her entire craft room. Her craft room was um, a mess, a mess. She moved into a new house. Everything just kind of got stacked in there as things often do and things just started piling up. And once they started piling up, and then she, every time she looked in there, she was like, that is not gonna be fun. I don't wanna go in there. I don't wanna do anything. It's not motivating or inspiring. Some of you have that same experience. Well, when we went there to clean up her craft room, I said, you need to set a purge goal. And she said, no, I'm keeping all my stuff. I'm not purging anything. I love my stuff. I wanna keep all my stuff. <clears throat> you have to purge. You have to purge something. And I don't care how you purge or how much you purge, but you need to set a purge goal and you need to meet or exceed that goal. Why is it important? It's important for your head, right? I talked a few minutes ago about everything starts in your brain, everything starts in your head. So you need to set a purge goal. Now, you can set a purge goal. You can say, I'm gonna purge six inches. I'm gonna purge a pound of craft supplies for every year I've been crafting. I'm gonna purge one 12 by 12 by 12 box. I'm gonna purge um, whatever, whatever goal you want to set. You can set that for yourself, but you have to set a goal and you really have to work to achieve it. Now, going back to my sister, she said, no, I'm not doing it. I can't purge, I don't wanna purge, I want all my stuff. And there was a shoe box on the floor, a, just a Crocs shoe box with the attached lid. And I said to her, do you, could, could you fill that shoe box? Could you purge that shoe box full of stuff? Do you think there's that much stuff in your, and she said, oh yeah, 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 I could totally do that. That shoe box, sure, no problem, okay? For those of you who watched the video, you know she ended up purging an entire, the back of her husband's pickup truck of stuff. But you have to start in your head and you have to attack this challenge, particularly if it's hard for you, um, with something very small and manageable so that your brain will get on board with the whole program. So if purging scares you, there's another blog post called um, Purge Patrol, love it or lose it, that you might find helpful. But remember, your goal is to have a craft room that you love to be in, and that's going to require that you get rid of some stuff. I'm not telling you how much stuff. I'm not. I'm saying you have to set that expectation for yourself, but if you need help, get, with, get on the Get Organized Challenge and they will help you. At the very least, choose a shoebox and just know that you're gonna fill that shoebox, but you need to set a purge goal. There are a lot of tips for making purging easier. 
Uh, you'll find those in the Purge Patrol um, video blog post. I think it's actually a podcast, um, but we'll get you a link to that. So if you struggle with purging and you are certainly not alone, um, that may help you with some tips and tricks, things other people have done to make it successful, to make their purging successful. The next thing you need to do is create your themes and sentiments list. And these are all the things that you craft about organized alphabetically. Whether it's a theme or a sentiment, doesn't matter, they're all gonna go into the same list. So beach, camping, travel, those are all themes. Birthday, bon voyage, congratulations, those are sentiments. They're all gonna go together. So one alphabetical list, all your themes and sentiments together. Now, what I want you to keep in mind is as we start organizing, one of our goals is to be, is going to be to keep things together we use together. So as you're looking at your themes and sentiments list once it's written, I want you to think about what things you could combine, combine and conquer. As an example, you might have a category for soccer, for football, for tennis, for baseball. Those are all sports. So you could have one big category called sports with those subcategories in it. Why is that important? Because when you sit down to create some sports thing, whether that's a piece of wall decor, a party favor, a card, or a scrapbook page, within the sports category, there are things like cleats and whistles and banners that say go team and trophies and our coach is the best. Those might be in any of your individual sports categories, but they would work in all of them. So you wanna be able to see all your different options really quickly and easily rather than looking for you know in soccer in football in tennis to find that thing that you remember that you have so that's one reason maximum use out of all those supplies but the other thing is if you're going to travel with your supplies you want to be able to grab one category sports and take it with you rather than thinking oh, i'm going to work on my daughter's tennis pictures and just grab the tennis category and then get where you're going and realize oh I wish I would have brought, you know, the soccer category or football because it had the, you know, the go team, our coach is number one, love my coach, whatever it is. So combine and conquer is going to keep things together that you might use together so you get the highest and best use of all of your supplies. So the, one, the next thing you're going to do then is write that themes and sentiments list. And don't worry about perfect. You can add to it as you go. This is just a jumping off point. You can also download the example that we have linked here if you need somewhere or some way to get started. That is going to give you a good place to start. Go public. One of the defining factors about success with goals is whether or not you share your goals with somebody else who will help you, inspire you, motivate you, and hold you accountable for meeting those goals. So tell someone and tell them that you need them to support you in it and to ask you about it and to encourage you to meet your goals. The perfect person to tell is another crafty friend who also needs to get organized because if the two of you can get organized together and hold each other accountable, you're even more likely to actually meet your goals and get your craft room organized. You have to choose rewards. Woo, woo, woo. This is my favorite part. Staying motivated is key, especially for 12 weeks. So you need to choose 12 rewards. What are you gonna do for yourself, just for yourself, when you have met your goal for the week? And goals are gonna vary from person to person. Again, depending on how long you've been crafting, how much time you have, and how much stuff you have, you may your goal may be to sort six you know, boxes of paper and somebody else's goal might be to sort six inches of paper. But you're gonna set your goals each week and then as soon as you accomplish that goal, you need to take advantage of your reward. Again, rewards are gonna vary by who you are what your resources are, time, money, all of that stuff. So some people's reward might be uh, $25 spending free at, free at Michael's. Some people's reward might be, hey, I'm gonna go for a walk all by myself. I'm gonna take a bubble bath. I'm gonna spend an hour crafting where no one bothers me. So whatever your reward is, you need to write down all 12 of your rewards and be ready to reward yourself when you've made that goal. So put some thought into that. This is another thing that you're gonna use your notebook for. What are those 12 rewards that you are gonna reward yourself with? Um, oh, what kind of crafter are you? 
Again, there's a link here in the blog that'll take you to a blog post. What kind of crafter are you? Before you start deciding on tools and supplies and organizing your stuff, you need to really have your mind around who you are and how you craft. If you have a craft room and you always only craft alone in your craft room, you are Kathy Craft Room. That's our girl, Kathy. And what you need to organize your supplies is gonna be different than Mary Mobile Maker who only ever crafts away from home. She's trying to get away from her house and have her own private time two totally different two ends of the spectrum and then there's a couple gals in between and some of us are crossover um so, so read the what kind of crafter are you sort of get your brain around okay when i'm thinking about organizing my supplies how i'm organizing where i'm organizing what type of tools i'm using to organize them in i want them to fit with my crafting life whether i'm a stay-at-home girl or a travel girl or somewhere in between. So really important to take that into account and figure out who you are and how that's gonna work best for you. The next thing that you're gonna do this week is you're gonna evaluate your craft space. What does it look like? What functions in your craft space? What do you like? What don't you like? What could you rearrange to make things more functional um, right within the space that you've got? And then what things might you need to buy or Maybe you need to get rid of something or replace something, but looking around your space, what, what do you need in that space? What don't you need? And there are some things that you can do straight away. First thing is the more stuff you can get going vertically instead of horizontally, the better off you're going to be in terms of access. It's a lot easier to pull this off the shelf when it's a vertical than it is to have a stack of rolls of vinyl all stacked on top of each other and have to fight the stack to pull out the roll that you need, right? A lot of stuff can go vertical that you maybe never even thought about just reorienting it so that it would be vertical. So looking around your space, kind of figuring that out. What do I have? What do I need? How could I maximize the efficiency of this space? It's going to be key. The next thing you want to do once you've done that is make room. We're going to sort pa paper first next week. The reason we sort paper first is because it's really easy to get our brains around the four section system when we're sorting paper, but we can also use it right away. So if you sort six inches of paper next week, the very next time you sit down to craft, there's a good chance you're going to be able to take advantage of that work that you've done. And that is good for your brain. If you can get your brain around it because you can actually use it and see that benefit, it's gonna be so much easier to stay motivated and inspired to do even more organizing. So really important. Um, you're gonna clear out a spot. So I started talking about when you get that paper organized, you're gonna have a, you're gonna need a spot that this is my organized only stuff. This is my organized only paper. So you might have paper all around your room right now, but this spot that you clear out, that empty spot is where you're gonna put your newly organized paper. And as you continue to organize paper through the challenge, you're gonna keep adding it to that spot. So everything on the other side of your room might be a disaster this area is clean and organized and ready to go and it's really key because like i was saying your brain is going to look at that and go yes i'm making progress so you don't want to take all your neat tidy stuff and mix it in with the things that are unorganized you want your brain to be like ah oh, look at that i'm getting it done so create your or creating your organized only space is going to be key this week as well last but not least you need to gather those supplies that are lurking around. If you have HSN boxes in your garage or you have stuff in the back of your car or stuffed into your closet, get all that stuff out. Get it all into your craft area. Know what you've got and be able to see what you've got because it's easier and more satisfying when you've got all that stuff and then you're able to go, okay, I had all this stuff and now it's all cleaned up and put away. So gather those things that you've got floating around your house and put them into your craft areas so that you're ready to sort, store, and organize them as we work through the process. Okay, so in the big picture, those are all the things that you need to do. Now, you are have got on your, on this blog post, on the, um, you can download the, chat, the steps this week. So print your challenge checklist. It's got everything on there that I just talked about. Work through those steps in the challenge. When you're done with this week's challenge, when you've checked all the boxes 
And I would strongly recommend that you physically check the boxes. Again, very motivating for your brain. Um, then make sure that you enter to win this for this week's prize pack. You get to win enter every week. There's 12 prizes. They're awesome. All of them are awesome prizes. You're going to love any one of them that you win, but you got to enter to win and you have to enter every week. So as part of your reward to yourself, get online and enter to win for the prize pack each week. Okay, I think that's it. Print your checklist. Again, if you have questions, something doesn't make sense to you, please go over to the 2011 Get Organized Challenge group. Again, there's a link here in the blog. Join the group or lurk around, ask those questions. Somebody in that group is gonna be able to respond to you really quickly and let you know, give you an answer, give you a link, or help you out with whatever question you have. It is also an amazing place to share your before and afters. Everybody loves that, right? We all love a good makeover story. So if you feel like I'm gonna put myself out there, I'm gonna put my before up, and at the end of the challenge, I'm gonna put up my after. You might even wanna put up some durings. This is what I've done. You're gonna get a lot of support, motivation, and inspiration from the gals in that group. Well, mostly gals. There's a few guys in there as well. All right, everybody. I think that's it. I think we're ready to roll. Get busy, get your goals set up, follow your checklist, and I will see all of you right here on Creative Scrapbooker Magazine webpage for the 12 week Get Organized Challenge next week when we start challenge number two, organize your paper. Take care, have a great week, have a busy week, a productive week.